one is um, titled uh, Mitten, a flexible multimodal proof assistant. Or, uh, oh, I see the title here is different. OK. Um, anyway, uh, and uh, Philip Stassen will uh, give the talk. So uh, please, uh, you can start if you want. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. Um, thanks also for organizing this workshop. I'm very grateful to get the opportunity to present our work here. Um, this is a joint work with uh, Daniel Gratzer and Lars Birkdahl. So let me start by giving you um, an explanation of a problem that some of you might have seen before. So there are many situations where one would like to use modalities to prove a theorem or maybe to program something. An example of this would be guarded recursion that uses the later modality to prove um, to talk about co-induction. Now, uh, another example would be cohesive type theory that um, is sort of a type theory that has two type theories, one being spatial, the other one being set-like, and they communicate with each other. Now, when you would like to work with a proof assistant, you'll find that proof assistants such as Koch and Akta cannot be adjusted. So either they have already like a mod implemented for this, or you're not able to use it. And then, I mean, it is of course infeasible that you implement a new proof assistant for, for any modal situation that you might be interested in. So we try to mitigate that problem and therefore we contribute Mitten, which is a prototype implementation of MTT that's a multi-mode type theory that can handle multiple modalities. So concretely, what we did is we developed and implemented an algorithm, a normalization algorithm for MTT and a bidirectional type checking algorithm. So let me quickly talk about, give you some intuitions about MTT. So as I said, it is a multi-mode type theory. So it allows you to use multiple modalities, but it also has something like multiple modes. And I think a good intuition for you, it would be that you can think of a mode as being something where you can sort of attach a type theory to. So for example, if you have, think about having two modes and you would have at one mode, a sort of a homotopical type theory. And at another mode, you would have a normal paramount you type theory. This includes that you can have axioms at these two modes that would be together inconsistent. So you could have univalence at one mode and for instance, the full law of excluded middle or equality reflection at the other mode. Now, this kind of works because those are, they are sort of separate, these type theories, but of course we want them to interact. And that's where modalities come into play. So intuitively modalities are morphisms between modes and thereby they build a bridge between them. Concretely, this means that a modality induces an action on types that sends types from one mode into another. Similarly, it induces an action on terms that sends terms from one mode to another. This intuition is, however, a bit restricted to the non-dependent type theoretic case. And it's not entirely obvious how to extend that, especially because then you have to handle substitution and how substitution um, kind of interacts with modalities. So MTT, what MTT does is it uses a fit style approach to extend that intuition. Now modalities also induce an action on contexts, which is contravariant. This means that we get a new type of context. It's like a, a locked context. And this locked context now appears in the new formation and um, uh, introduction rule of modalities. You see them marked in red here. Now, when you have, of course, a new, a new primitive object as context, this kind of has vast consequences for the rest of your theory. And in particular, the variable rule now suddenly needs to talk about things that are behind locks and therefore it needs to be changed. We also have a quite subtle elimination rule to handle. So now we talked about modes and morphism between modes, namely modalities. And additionally, we now allow something like a, let's say local pre-order on modalities. What, what I mean with that is a pre-order on modalities that have the same boundaries or the same domain and co-domain. And what we want is that 
if a modality nu is smaller or equal than mu, that induces a natural transformation between contacts. And this concretely means in the syntax that you have these key substitutions that go from one locked context into another locked context. So now I kind of explained how, if you have an interesting modal situation, you need to kind of formulate it in terms of a mode theory to give it to our type checker. So that's basically why I explained that. And to summarize, this mode theory is in a way a collection of modes as objects. And then you have these morphisms between objects, these modalities, and then you have a local pre-order on every, so it's like a pre-order on every home set. I think this is a good point to mention that MTT is actually more general. MTT allows full two categories as mode theories. So we in this implementation only consider pre-order two categories or exactly this what I just uh, described here. That's a pre-order two category. And I'll explain later why. So now let's see how we can put this into practice. Um, so let's say you have an interesting modal situation and you already found a, a, a mode theory that models that. And how do you get a type check out of this? Well, so you need to provide a structure for an ML signature that is in our GitHub repo. In particular, you need to implement a type for modes and a type for modalities. Then you need to define an identity modality and a composition operation for modalities that is then used throughout the program. Then we want a domain and codomain of modalities to be available. So you need to define these functions. Finally, you also need to specify the pre-order relation and an equality relation. Let's look at a concrete example now. Um, so how would you, for instance, use this to talk about guarded recursion? So, and this is also insightful how one would come up with the modes theory, in fact. So um, we look, so we want to talk about guarded recursion. So what we do is we look at one of the models of guarded recursion, the topos of trees. We even take it a step further and we look at the topos of trees together with these adjoint functors gamma that goes from the topos of trees to set and delta, which goes the other way. This situation is well known to uh, model co-induction and can talk about streams and such. So from this, from this semantic motivation, we can, ah, we can come up with um, the following mode theory. It's like this bowling pin that you see here at the bottom. It has two modes. It has the mode T and the mode S. The mode T is stands in for the topos of trees, and then you have the set mode S. You have the modalities gamma and delta navigating between these two modes. And then you have another modality L, which stands in for later, which is the modality that is available at the topos of trees. Now, we furthermore want a few inequalities that are generated by the inequalities you see on the right side. And we want equalities that are generated by the equalities you see on the right side. Now, for completeness, the topos of trees validates the lerp axiom. So we also want these constant lerp to be available at the mode t. So this is like an overview of how this would look like. And now let's look at the concrete implementation of this. We would have a type mode with two constructors, s and t. Then we would have a type modality, which is sort of the, the, the closure under composition of the type mod modality constructors. Um, so you have this modality constructors, and then you just make, make a list of them. And that's a convenient way to, yeah, to model composition. And then we have like the identity modality and the composition operation of modalities that we kind of define here at the bottom. So what's left to do, we need to specify a domain function and a codomain function. Furthermore, we need to specify the pre-order relation and the inequality relation. But after we've done that, we actually successfully implemented guarded recursion and we can work with this now. And I mean, even co-inductive types, can, can, we can use them now. We can define streams and such. Okay, so how does this actually work? So how, how, how do we actually work agnostic of the mode theory that is involved? So first of all, for normalization for MTT, 
has been recently proven by Daniel Gratzer. And he uses like an Artem Gluin argument to establish that result. The proof is constructive, but it's not entirely clear how you would exhibit an algorithm out of that that you would want to implement. So we found that, so this is the point where this restriction to pre-order two categories come in. If we restrict to pre-ordered two categories, it's kind of convenient to implement because we can essentially use a version of the defunctionalized normalization by evaluation that um, Abel uh, developed in his um, habilitation thesis. And uh, as John Sterling said, this is apparently a very good approach. So this, this works kind of fine for us. And we the only thing we need is sort of some special constructions for modal things. And I mean, there's plenty, but they feel to be still in the spirit of the algorithm. Now, with the regard to the bidirectional type checking, that's really the point where we use the entire ML signature of, of the of the mode theory that you had to provide a structure for. So now, for instance, during type checking, there are several points where you will need to check equality of terms or types. And every time we do this, we normalize them, and then we check the equality as normalized terms. However, we don't normalize modalities. So there's a non-trivial equality that we have to check, which is the equality of modalities that uses the equality that you have to give in the structure. At every stage, we also have to kind of compare the boundaries of modalities with the, with the modes and whether everything is appropriate. So um, there's sort of bookkeeping. Finally, the pre-order then is used to verify that the variables are used correctly, which has to do with the new um, variable rule that comes um, from this, from this um, fixed style context that I mentioned in the beginning. Right, so to sum it up, we implemented a type checker that can easily be adjusted to fit many modal situations. The underlying normalization algorithm and type checker do not depend on specifics of the modalities. So this really, yeah, so this really um, uh, helps with the situation I described in the beginning. Now, if you have an interesting situation that you want to talk about, the only thing you need to do is you need to implement it in this as a structure for this signature and recompile, and then you have a proof assistant or type checker. So going forward, what would we like to do with this? Well, we would like to generalize it so that we can actually use full MTT. So now, so that we make this step from pre-order two categories to two categories. And then of course, it would be nice, like in the future at some point, if this would be, like if this proves to be a good, good tool that it, could also be used in a proof assistant. And that concludes my talk. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah. Thank you for the talk. Um, I see there's a question here online already. So I'll go ahead and ask that first. Um, so the question is from Kodiru. Um, and uh, asks, does your system allow giving a computational content to the lab axiom you showed earlier? Um, you basically mean whether, um, I mean, so you could have another axiom that, you mean like an equality saying, well, okay, we can yeah, afford a computation the, rule or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah so um, not a computation rule. You don't want to compute it, um, but you can have a propositional equality that you can just add as another axiom. but. I guess when you ask for computational content, um, you mean maybe a computation rule. And I think, I don't know how, so. so yeah. but, um, but is there uh, not no problem with normalization then, or? Uh, with normalization, not, um, but with canonicity, I guess, yes. Or canonicity, uh, yeah. right, yeah. okay. Thanks. Maybe, I mean, I, I'm not sure about this theory. I'm not sure, like, if you add like the loop, like, let's say, let's call it like a propositional loop equality rule. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether you can get something like propositional canonicity, but right. uh, I'm really yeah. no expert in, in, in this part. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Any questions from the live audience? 
Um, no, I don't think so. So a quick question, maybe I remember another system, I believe under the name of uh, Menkar or something. That was also, I think by Andreas Nats and uh, maybe uh, co-authors. It was also a multimodal proof system, but uh, I'm not sure if you know that or uh, how it compares to you. Um, I'm not sure, like, so I definitely don't know how it compares here, unfortunately, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Um, I, I also, I don't know the details, so I'm, I can't tell either. So, uh, yeah. um, ah, uh, Daniel says that he knows. Um, yes, yeah, so maybe yeah. we can get him. If you raise your hand and someone can get you on stage. I believe. Oh, I can let you on stage. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're here. Uh, am I uh, audible? And yes. 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 Lovely. Hello. Um, just to say that uh, Mencarb predates the, the type theory that we've implemented here in Mitten. So Mencarb was an implementation that eventually led to the type theory MTT, uh, and that was joint work with Avias. And then since then, we've implemented Mitten. So Mitten is a little bit better behaved theoretically, but less featureful than Mencar. OK, I see. Yeah, thanks. That uh, clears things up. Um, oh, there's one more question here. Have you considered extending uh, Agda or similar with it? I guess that's uh, what, was on, what was on your last slide. Uh, yeah, so that would be, of course, very cool um, if we um... If if this if if we could work on that, um, to be fair, I think it would make sense to wait until we figure out how to do the full case before we do this. Right. Um, yeah, but that would be very nice. So we we have been getting a more and more modalities in Agda already. So it would be nice to have a kind of a unifying framework for the existing ones that we have already. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Um, yeah, I think we have to move on to the next talk then. Um, yeah. But uh, thank you again for the Thank you.